Alrighty, in this video, we're going to talk about starting up with our very first GitLab CI job. And this is what I call the Hello World example. We're just going to get a random computer somewhere to tell us Hello World in the log file of our repository. So, let's go ahead and open that up. Now, we're going to go ahead and add CI CD to a project. And I've got my terminal on the right side here, which is already in the virtual pipelines event selection repository with all of this code in here by default. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead to our repository that we made in the GitLab. I already have this open in another tab. So the first thing we want to do is actually go ahead and uh, GitLab CI YAML. So, let's go ahead and look at this code block that we have here on the left. We're going to go ahead and echo hello world straight into a brand new file that doesn't exist yet, as you can see from the list above. So, we're going to go ahead and create that. Now, let's go ahead and create a new branch, a feature branch, for adding the CI to our project. The get checkout dash b means to create a new branch. I would have called this feature slash add ci. This feature being what we call a feature branch, and it is a sort of a human friendly way to denote the purpose of this branch. So I'm going to go ahead and add the GitLab CI YAML file that we just made and go ahead and commit it. and then push it up to our repository. The dash u here means to set the upstream branch. So that means that the branch that we have locally will be tracked by the new branch that we create on the remote. And you can see this very last line here, branch feature at CI set up to track remote branch feature at CI from origin. So that's what the dash u flag did. All right, so let's go ahead back to the repository, our project here in GitLab, and let's go ahead and get that new branch. Here it is. Let's navigate to it. And already you can see that we have this Redux here at the top. So the pipeline failed. Well, that's both good news and bad news. The good news is you managed to make a pipeline happen. The bad news is it failed. So let's go ahead and check it out. And you can see that the error here in this very nice red box is that it said the included GitLab CI YAML doesn't have valid YAML syntax. That makes sense. All right. We're going to go ahead and fix this. So um, you can also see these little tags here that I'll highlight over. It tells me that it's the latest pipeline for the most recent commit on this, this branch. The YAML is invalid and there's a CICD YAML configuration error. Fantastic. So that's just a little thing that we have here for the linter. So let's go ahead and click on that. And Let's go ahead and add in the contents of the GitLab CI YAML file, which was just hello world, and click validate. Now you can see here that the linter has mentioned that the syntax is incorrect. Great. So what a linter is, is it is a tool that knows the context of what you want to validate or check the format of. So imagine that YAML is some sort of structured language that is associated with the schema. We know what a correctly structured YAML looks like. So all we do is has we have a tool, a linter, which checks the file that you create against the expected structure of any YAML file. And if it finds an error, it lets us know. This way we can use the linter to figure out how to write a YAML file that doesn't crash. So we want to make this hello world actually work. So let's go ahead and actually add a script. When we have a script called echo hello world, we can do it this way with quotes around it. We can also 
actually, let's go ahead with quotes around this for the most part. Let's look at the tutorial page to double check what I did here. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll get to these merge requests in a second. So let's go ahead and try to validate this YAML file that we have here. And now the linter says that this is correct. It says here that we create a test job called hello world, which is at this top line here, which is great. And it tells us what the value of the script is. All right, let's go ahead and get this working. So we're gonna go ahead on the terminal and fix this up. Let's add the changes that we have. Mention that we're fixing it. And let's push it. Alright. Now I'm going to go back to the project. I'll just go back in my browser. Go back a couple more times. Great, back to the pipeline. Alright, so let's go back to this branch that we have here. The next thing I want to do is create a merge request. And to explain why I want to create a merge request is so that we can keep track of all the pipelines that have happened for this particular branch. It makes it just a little bit easier to keep track of. So create, we're gonna click that green button here. We're gonna start this as a work in progress. We're gonna call this a uh, feature RCI to project. Exclamation mark, because we're very excited about this. And go ahead and click to submit the merge request. So now that we've submitted the merge request, you can see that there's three separate tabs, four separate tabs here. So this pipeline tab is the important tab that I want to point out. This tab allows you to see all the pipelines that have run for that particular branch. And this is a nice thing to have. So that means whenever I submit new commit, I can go back and look at this tab and see the most recent pipeline. So I've just noticed that this pipeline has passed and our hello world has passed. So let's go ahead and click on it and see the output of that job. There's a whole bunch of output here. I'm just gonna look all the way towards the bottom where I see these two lines. Line 29 here is the script for executing Echo Hello World, and line 30 is the output. Remember that these execute of an echo command is zero. Therefore, this passes, and the CI marks this as a succeeded job. And this is great. And this is our entirety of the Hello World. Just scrolling through to double check. All right. Let's talk about this last part of the section before we move on. So I mentioned two little keywords here, pipelines and jobs. So you might be wondering, what's the difference between pipelines and jobs? Well, if you go back over this tab here, you can see that this pipeline has a single job called test. Uh, sorry, a single job called hello world in a test stage. So right now, it's not very clear what the separation is until we do a much more complicated setup. But you can see that in this particular merge request and in this particular branch, we have run the pipelines twice. The very first pipeline here has failed with an invalid YAML, and the second pipeline has succeeded. Hopefully that makes more sense. There are also stages, but we're going to go ahead and talk about stages in a future task. You can imagine stages as being a way to group all these different jobs, and pipelines as a way to group both stages and jobs. But to summarize, in order to get CI running in any project, all you need to do is add a got .gitlab ci.yaml file. And CI linters are very important to you. So that's the end for this section. Join us next time as we start adding more features to the CI.